Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bless your name for this moment. The Bible says where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in their midst. We are more than two. We are more than three. With the eye of faith, we see you present here and online. Let your word come to us with clarity. There is hope for every family. Hope for every family member. Hope for every marriage. Hope for every single person. May we sense the guiding hand of God. We pray today, any family, any individual, under any form of demonic manipulation, thinking of suicide, thinking of giving up, people have checked out in life. They are not living anymore. They are passing through life. Today, through the power of your word, bring hope, bring courage, bring clarity. Give us a reason to keep believing. If there is anybody here or online who is sick in a family and trusting God for a miracle, we pray in the name of Jesus, let the power of God be dissipated even now. Touch the sick. Touch those who are ill, chronic. We pray, let there be complete healing. Healing of the mind, healing of the soul, healing of the body. In the name of Jesus, we pray today, visit every home, visit every life, visit every individual, visit every space. May somebody encounter Jesus today, for we have asked in no mean name, but the name of all names, that name is Jesus. I also pray today, touch my lips. May I not be seen. May I not be heard. May I not be the centerpiece of this evening. May Jesus be the one. And that is the name through which I have prayed. In his name we say, Amen. Please be seated. All right. Good evening. How was your day? Did you have a productive day? Great. Our subject for this evening, unfamiliar, family frustrations, subheading, let's be attentive. Unfamiliar, family, frustrations, let's be attentive. But as I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You can say an amen out there. That's a weak one. You can say an amen out there. Amen. I want to make to you four promises. Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. And the reason is the Bible means what it says and says just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three, you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, our lives, your life and mine will never be the same. Our subject or theme for this week-long project, hope for family, subheading, build, establish and flourish. But for this moment, we are dealing with the subject, unfamiliar, family, frustrations, subheading, let's be attentive. Let's be attentive. As a way of recap, today is day number three. Day one, we had two sessions, familiar, family failures, subheading, it's about us. Then in the evening, we dealt with familiar, family, fatalities subheading let's be real and yesterday we dealt with unfamiliar family follies let's rethink today 
we will deal with unfamiliar family frustrations be attentive in psalm this series is hope or we envisioned it designed it with the hope that it will lead families to be constructed or individuals to construct families according to god's divine ideal families will be convinced that it can work families will be commanded based on god's word to do what god wants them to do families will find a reason to correct the ills in their relationships and in their connections and bonding families will be complemented what we know god will bring his word to complement what we already know through his word we will connect we will be converted and then we become the families with hope that will dispense hope to a hopeless world unfamiliar family frustrations uh, let's be attentive allow me to state for the sake of time when we talk about frustration we are talking about the feeling of being upset or annoyed as a result of being unable to change or achieve something anytime we use the noun frustration we are saying someone is upset someone is annoyed someone is restless on account that he or she is unable to mutate change or reconstruct something or achieve a goal or an objective if you permit an a when we say frustration we are talking about the feeling of being annoyed or less confident because you cannot achieve what you want or something that makes you feel this way frustrations there are many reasons why families are frustrated we have what we call familiar family frustrations the theme today is unfamiliar family frustrations there are elements there are issues there are there are variables if you permit that makes family frustrated the known ones are very very clear for people but today what are this unfamiliar family frustration variables another word or other words for frustration uh, exasperation annoyance anger vexation irritation bitterness resentment disappointment disheartenment dispiritedness depression dissatisfaction discontentment discontent aggravation when they say someone is frustrated in simple terms this picture on your screen is my best visual description of a frustrated individual and i dare say many families many homes are frustrated like that those who appear to pretend are in this state they are wounded they are hurt and they shield it so we dress on sabbath or those of you who go to church on sunday or those who go to the mosque on friday or those who are agnostics or those who do not believe anything by believing nothing every one of us is hurt affected in a very serious way in fact for the sake of those online I want you to do something those of you in the room be upstanding go to somebody and in one minute 30 seconds tell the person three things I mentioned 10 10 common familiar family frustrations just go to the next person and mention it and those online just drop it in the box what are the 10 I'm sure the camera screen will pick it up so that they can see online what are the your top 10 common familiar family frustrations you can share them online your 10 top family frustrations you can share them online and we'll be able to pick them up
and you can be sure as you are speaking i'm able to check those of you who are sharing online i can see the post you are posting your top 10 common familiar family frustrations in context whether in the family circle or in relationships just name them if you are done you can have a seat all right <laughs> All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, so you have discussed it. All right. Remember, our subject this evening is unfamiliar family frustrations. Our scripture text says, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Unfamiliar, family frustration. If I want to give it another caption, I will have said, our pathway to confusion. Why are there so many confusions in relationships, in marriages, between father and mother, parent and children, children and parents, siblings, between people preparing to be married, this chicken and lizard and grass cutter relationship, all are filled with a lot of what we call confusion. The question is why? Including those with the Holy Spirit. Their relationships are confused and frustrated and people are depressed. This evening, we want to just get the subject. Love is not enough to keep a marriage or relationship. Good intentions are not enough. So when we say we are just in love, no. The three common things we need for relationship to survive, we need wisdom, we need understanding, and we need knowledge. Allow me to say, the Bible says, by understanding, a home is established. This is the subject of discussion today. What do we mean by established? Established is set up on a firm or a permanent basis to be firm be stable made secure made ready caused to stand in an upright position when they say through wisdom a house is built many people have built homes but the homes are on shaky foundations how can you build a home and keep the home on a solid foundation this is the subject of this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the word used are establish and understanding. The English word for understanding simply means what's under you to stand on. Understand. It means under. Stand. It means the, the thing you are standing on, what, what is under that? In other words, many people are standing on shaky foundation, shaky grounds. I like the song which says, my hope is built on nothing less. But Jesus' blood and righteousness, all other ground, they are sinking sun. We are asking, what is your relationship standing on? Without understanding, you cannot know the level, the health, if you permit, of your relationship. Through wisdom, you built the house. We dealt with it yesterday. Yet, for it to be firm, for it to stand the test of time, it must be on understanding. Understanding threatens your foundation and gives you substance. So you can stand flat-footed with confidence and certainty. A young man and a young lady are dating, yet she is not sure where all these are headed towards. No, something is wrong. Someone is stupid. 
you need understanding then you can be sure you see a wife and she's unstable in the relationship no somebody is not giving her a reason to believe this is worth investing without understanding there is no confidence there is no certainty you see people are double dating people are something is not right there is a confusion somewhere understanding means doing things with a sense or a depth of meaning this is opposed to the shallowness understanding gives you the reason or the justification or the why it is this way or it is that way understanding it brings clarity but you see understanding is shallow it must be deep when you gain the understanding of a concept it will be very difficult for you to be swayed of such belief system people backslide people give up people give in for lack of understanding in the old testament a lot of words have been used for understanding uh, but allow me i'm not here to do a hebrew class uh, i am just a student of the bible but one key word that describe understanding usually used in scripture as you can see on your screen literally means realization understanding means examination understanding means discernment understanding could mean the details in between listen between the journey and the destination understanding calls for knowing what is the detail in between i will explain understanding could mean paying attention if you permit to details understanding take your bibles deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13 choose wise understanding and knowledgeable man from among your tribes and i will make them heads over you in other words choose men with capacity to discern men with the capacity to realize to examine to pay attention to details or men who have capacity to know in between understanding deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6 understanding the bible says therefore be careful to observe them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people in other words this is your discernment this is your capacity to realize this is your period to pay attention to details in the sight of the people who will hear all these statues and say surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people understanding first Chron chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 as for you my son solomon the god of your father and serve him with all your loyal heart and with a willing mind for the lord searches all hearts and understands the lord can discern all the intent the lord can examine the lord can pay attention to the details the lord can know in between what really you meant to do understanding understanding again realization examination discernment the details in between paying attention understanding Job 28 verse 23 I'm building up a case follow me God understands it we used it yesterday concerning wisdom they say where is wisdom and Job says God is the only one who understands its way in other words God is the only one who can realize who can discern who knows the details of what wisdom is all about understanding Psalm 20 32 verse 9 do not be like the horse or like the mule which have no understanding 
which must be harnessed with beat and bridle, else they will not come near you. Do not be like a horse without discernment, without paying attention to detail, without knowing in between. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest challenge or the second most important challenge facing the home or variable causing homes to be in disarray is understanding. Psalm 92 verse 6, a senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand. Psalm 119 verse 27 verse 34 verse 73 says, one, make me understand the way of your precept. Verse 34, give me understanding and I shall keep your law. In other words, the psalmist is saying, understanding is, Lord, let me realize, if you permit, let me realize, let, let, give me realization, give me discernment, give me the capacity to examine, give me what it takes to pay attention to the details of your law. The reason why the families are on a shaky foundation or on shaky foundations is that people, inmates, are not paying attention to details. Our subject this evening, unfamiliar, unfamiliar family frustrations. Let's pay attention. The second, I'm going to box them together quickly. The second form of understanding in scripture literally means cleverness, skills, ponder, or consideration. That is the meaning. So when the Bible uses understanding in some other context, it may mean cleverness, it may mean skill, it may mean the capacity to ponder or to consider. In other words, for example, in Exodus chapter 31 verse 3, the Bible says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding. It means in skills, understanding. Exodus 35 verse 31, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding. It means cleverness, unusual precision of intelligence understanding proverbs chapter 18 verse 2 a fool has no delight in cleverness in acquiring skills in the ability to ponder or in the capacity to give consideration a fool has no delight in understanding isaiah 40 verse 28 have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the Lord, the creator of the earth of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding, in other words, his cleverness, his skills, his ability to ponder, his capacity to consider is unsearchable. Understanding. Unfamiliar. Family frustrations. Let me pull it together. So whilst understanding may mean realization examination discernment or the the details in between or to pay attention to details in some other instances it may mean cleverness skills ponder or consideration there are some three four five other ways to look at understanding but i'm going to box all of them together in some the last three areas of understanding means insight prudence or comprehension if you permit awareness understanding why are families going through unprecedented frustrations husbands do not have the capacity to realize what their wives are going through they don't have the skill to examine the face a woman is in there is no discernment that this man this is what is happening we marry 
and we are looking for the coming of Jesus, but in between, nobody is paying attention to the details. So she is drifting away. She is emotionally now connected to somebody at work, but nobody can discern. Nobody can realize. Nobody knows the details. Nobody pay attention to the details. If you permit, nobody has what we call the cleverness, the skills, the ponder, the capacity to ponder or to consider. Nobody has the intelligence, the prudence, the insight, the comprehension, or is able to sense a difference in her mood to be aware. I am losing my girlfriend or my wife. So what do I mean by understanding? It is the ability. So that's an error. That brings together facts and make deep meaning out of saying. This is a non-shallow meaning. Understanding means you are not just looking at the surface. I'm attempting. Many marriages are shaky. They are wobbling. They are not firm because the parties lack death. You are talking to a husband and you are talking like a shallow, senseless woman at your age. The marriage will collapse. No amount of prayer will survive or cause the marriage to survive. You need a certain threshold of death, a certain threshold of knowledge, if you permit, of meaning, insight to keep a relationship. Through wisdom, you build. But you want to keep a family, you need a certain minimum of ability to examine, capacity to discern, and know the death. We have lost the children. When we were losing them, we were not paying attention to the details. We don't lose somebody in a day. It takes time. Understanding means ability to separate the observable knowledge from life or life distinguish the sin or bring back together so for example genesis chapter 1 verse 4 when god separated the word used there means understanding is the capacity to separate truth from fact reality from disillusionment or seemingly same it's a skill it's a capacity Understanding provides the capacity to respond with insight. Something happens and you have what it takes to respond to its insight based on a death of awareness of the situation so that an insightful response occurs rather than a surface or an instinctive response. Many of us are instinctive. Something happens, we respond. Something happens, you respond. But guess what? You do not have the, what it takes to use death, to analyze, to examine, and to say, this must be the conclusion. For you to have wisdom, you need two variables, knowledge and understanding. <laughs> let me move from the technicality, let me bring it home. What does great, what is happening there? Tell the person close by you. Let's go for one minute commercial break. Be upstanding. Those of you online, we are asking the question, what is happening on the screen? Just move to somebody. Just stand up. Come on, just stand up. Don't worry. Just stand up. Or tell the person very close by you. Just whisper. But be upstanding. Please be upstanding. Just be upstanding. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening there? The experts are giving the analysis. All right? Those of you on YouTube, on Facebook, please just tell us what is happening there. I hope they can be able to see the screen. Good. All right. Guess what? The ability to descend 
examine and come to a real right conclusion is what we are attempting to say. What we are saying today is this. The reason why families are always quarreling, frustrated, there is rage, there is anger, there seems to be no understanding, no communication, all this, you know, there is no communication, he doesn't love me, the money problem, all they are fruits. The real problem is somebody lacks understanding. I will explain. When you see lives broken, without understanding what caused such lives to be broken, you cannot solve the problem. When a spouse is reacting or behaving in a way and the other is reacting, the issue is you need to understand the background. When you see love is broken and by the time church board is sitting, sometimes church board members, we are only using our shallow experiences. Fake analysis. Shallow conceptualization of the problem. But broken lives, broken love, broken hearts, broken homes, including broken hopes. For it to get there, what you first need to go to find out is, what are they standing on? A man is bent on saying, I'm done. No. Don't just say, oh, maybe he has, he's saying somebody. No, 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 no. You first must find out what is under him. What, what is the basis of his decision? We call it understanding. Another way to say it is, since the journey, the journey started, from where they, were, they, they got married or they were dating, they met each other, to when they got to where they are now, in between what has been happening, what is happening, you need to comprehend that at a certain threshold of death. Then you can tell what is the problem. It's not every marital problem that sex solves. That's cheap. There are deeper issues. But you see, we always use these old tricks. Old tricks. Some of us, because we are what we call old foxes. So we say, based on my experience, this is happening, this is the meaning. Please, between today for the rest of your life, when your boyfriend is acting in a way, the first thing is not to quickly proffer a solution. You first must investigate what is he standing on, his understanding. Let me say it differently. Hear me. Many people talk about this in marriage, but nobody understands it. The basis of marrying the woman, I love her, I love him. The question is, do you understand? In other words, do you know what love stands on? Even love, we claim to be professing. The third issue is, the reason why marriages are collapsing, relationships are not standing, is because we do not under. We, we don't know what is under what we are professing. I want to marry. Do you understand marriage? Tomorrow I'm going to deal with definition of terms. No. So for example, you ask somebody, what is love? I de no, that's too difficult. Who is a man? If I bring you microphone right now, you the man, you may be found wanting. In your mind, answer. The Holy Spirit will mark you. 
Who is a woman? Chances are that you don't even understand who a man is. Who a woman is. And a young woman wants to marry a young man as a husband and first doesn't even know what is the definition or what makes a man. What must make marriage. This concept or even love is misunderstood. In other words, your death of examination, your death of comprehension, your capacity to know in between even the concept is weak. So how can you strike on such a shaky foundation? Ladies and gentlemen, we go to school. In Ghana, before you get a degree, plus or minus, six, plus three, nine, plus three, 12, plus four, 16 years to get a first degree. In some cases, if you go to KG1, KG1B, KG1C, nursery 1A, you may be spending about 19 to 20 years. But when it comes to marriage, when it comes to family, everybody feels they know, especially the men. We are ignorant, but we have too much ego. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say this evening. Let me use this as an example. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling for the fact that blood is running through, through your body and, and, and your whole system is agitated. It doesn't mean that it's love. Love is a decision. Love is a debt you owe. Love it's a principle. Love is a choice. Love is an act of the will. Love is commitment. Let me give you a Bible reference. Then you get it. I repeat, we don't understand. The Bible says marriages are not established because there is a lack of understanding. Look at Luke chapter 6. Verse 27 to 36, but I'll just pick some of them. You can go and read the rest home for the sake of time. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Pause. What is love? Based on the text. You need a threshold of death to know this. Let me go to another text. We'll pull the two together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to verse 48. I read just some part. The Bible says, you have heard that it was said, love your enemy or your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your father in heaven he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rains on the righteous and the unrighteous and if you greet only your own people what are you doing more than others do not even pagans do that be perfect Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect, question, what is love according to Matthew chapter 5? What is love according to Luke chapter 6? Let me read it again. Give it a thought. The principle is you can love an enemy. In fact, it's a command. You must love an enemy based on the text, true or false. Kenyan, speak to me. True or false? Good. Is love a feeling? Based on the text. It's a what? Look at the way I define love. I started by saying love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. 
Love is a debt you owe. Love is a principle. Love is a choice. Love is an act of the will. Love is commitment. Simple terms, if I can love my enemy, and it's a command, Jesus says, God says, love an enemy. Love those who want to persecute you. Love those who curse you. The meaning is this. You choose to love. You don't feel. He hates me. I don't feel like loving him. No, we don't feel it. It's a choice. You don't get it. Hmm. This is the reason why you cannot hate your wife forever. Sometimes the way I can be vindictive, but for this Bible, what I will do? My wife knows. This one has, it, the way it can punish me. She will do some things, and I said, this girl, I'll punish her. This one, I'll punish her. But when you are there, the Bible says, love your enemies. Is she an enemy? No. If you are to love an enemy, out of the mother of your children, So just imagine, a young man enters a relationship. The basis of his love, the understanding of his love, is the size of the breasts, is the shape of the hips, is the color of the body. Uh, then the day, After four children, when the breast has bowed to Baal, there is no more love. Let me say it differently. Watch the way Matthew says it or said it. You have heard that it was said, love your enemy and hate your neighbor. No, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In other words, we love on the basis of principle. It's a decision. It's an act of the will. If love is a feeling, the day I don't feel the way I used to feel, I look for somebody else that I feel like that towards. Then after staying with that person, I feel that thing for... In, in the early 16th century, there is a theory called romanticism. And their scholars brought it up, which says, you know, during the time of enlightenment, we call it the moment, the season of... Uh, I've forgotten the technical word. Renaissance. During the time of renaissance, they brought up a theory called romanticism. The philosophy says, so romanticism is the basis on which people say that. We were at the beach, and he just grabbed me and kissed me. Oh, it was romantic. It was in public. No, he didn't use his brain. He was stupid. But because media has said it over and over again, it looks normal. So a group of people will say that, you know what, we were just at the beach, and then we made out. They had sex at the beach. Then they said they made up. You know how they did, oh, he's so romantic. He, he, he made love to me. Foolishness. Love is not sporadic. You think, you agree, you act. So when you act on love, the outcome of the decision, you are responsible. Love is not like a reflex action. They take an iron, they burn you. It, it, it's, it's not a reflex action. The Bible says, love your enemies. It means you think through, you know, it's not easy, but I choose to love this person. Let me give you a further biblical example. Love is not emotion. I'm making a point. Watch this. Value is what you are ready to pay for that 
which you cherished for love. Jesus' death did not add value to me. It's because of my value Jesus died. Let me say it differently. Calvary did not add value to humanity. The value of humanity caused Jesus to go to Calvary and die on the cross. If that is clear, somebody say an amen. In other words, love is premeditated. It's costly. It's expensive. So, if somebody says or claims they love you, ask the question, what are they willing to give up for you? When Jesus claimed he loved us, what did he give up for us? All of heaven. So which kind of love is this? That is not ready to give up anything. It's only professing in the mouth, I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a deception out there. And it's because people do not under. They don't know what people are standing on when they are speaking. Let me say it differently. What are you willing to give up for me? The, the, the people say, you love me, but you cannot give up other women for me. No, that cannot be love. You need to understand. Hear me, it's not emotion. For the fact that he's 30 feet tall, and he has 6 million packs, eh? and he's from the descendant of the horse, you don't get it. You are Kenyans. So, listen. I love him, but I cannot give up my boss for him. That cannot be love. Tell the person next by you. Ask the person, do you love me? Now people are careful to use the word now. Please, I say, ask the person close by you or tell somebody, those online, just type and mention somebody's name. If you have a boyfriend or, or a husband or wife, just ask them, do you love me? When they finish the answer, bang, then ask them the next question, what are you willing to give up for me? Somebody just sent a message and says, I'll give up you for myself. <laughs> Let me say it differently. Our topic is unfamiliar family frustrations. When you see a home in agitation, ah, they don't need prayer. You first need to understand before you pray. The Bible says we sing with understanding and we also pray with all understanding. Some of the prayers we are praying for married couples is like those speaking unintelligible ecstatic tongue because we do not even understand the variables, what is at play, and we are just praying. Prayer is the easiest thing to do when there is frustration and problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand. Allow me to say, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But the Bible says, and in all you're getting, after getting everything you can get, but for this one, you need to get understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Allow me to share with you seven benefits why you need to prioritize love. Because there are some uh, 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 understanding, because there are some benefits that come with understanding. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 to verse, verse 32. And when we read it, I want you to give me an answer. From, from Issachar, men who understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. Question What is the benefit of understanding based on this text? It's not rhetorical. I need an answer. I'll verbalize it. Look at it again. Think. 
Don't use emotions. Think. From Issachar, men who understood the times. When people understand what is the ripple, the text is, when they understood, what do they now do? They know what must be done. In other words, understanding offers guidance and direction. Write it down. Any family without direction their problem is understanding deficiency. Any organization, any group, any people that do not know what to do, they lack understanding. Do you know the season now? Life is created in various seasons. If I were to have time, maybe Sabbath I'll talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, marriage has seasons. Life has seasons. The season you are in, if you know the season, you need to also know what must be done. Understanding gives homes or give homes leadership. The reason why there is no strong leadership homes is that men, women, do not understand. The sons of Issachar, they understood the time based on the death of their examination, their assessment, their analysis, their cleverness, their skills, they can able to say, during this time, David must be king over Israel. Many homes cannot. The reason is that there is a deficit of understanding. Benefit number two. Why is understanding so critical? Look at Proverbs 14, verse 28, 29. The Bible says, whoever is patient has understanding. But one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Hey, Tiki Menza, Lord have mercy. Whoever is patient has understanding. Based on this test, what is the benefit of understanding? Think. Come again. Come again. Understanding produces patient the reason why he is not patient is he doesn't understand her actions the reason why she's saying the things she's saying she doesn't understand I had a disagreement serious disagreement with Samola last time when I travel I said okay she doesn't understand Any time a woman tells you, I am tired, I am tired, I am tired, I am tired, or a man is saying, I can't take it anymore, I can't take it anymore, I can't take it anymore. The only reason is, so what, 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 what is happening? There, there is all. The subject matter, the person has not had a death of it, a lack of understanding. When, when Kenyans are saying, we are dying of the tax and they don't want to pay. The government must know. They don't understand. Whatever you have said, President Ruto and cabinet, Kenyans don't understand. So they will be impatient. The opposition, they go to conclave and people cannot take, listen, any time the Bible says, Whenever there is impatience, the reason is there is what? A misunderstanding. Conflict is a problem of misunderstanding. Divorce is a problem of misunderstanding. Abuse is a problem of misunderstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the things that destroy the marriages. But the real unfamiliar cause of the problem is what? Lack of understanding. Your wife is not bad. She just doesn't understand you. Your husband is not a bad person. You see, when a man is cheating, or a woman is cheating, the reason is he doesn't understand what it means. 
to be married. I'm not saying he doesn't have any fair idea. Remember, I took time to explain what it means to understand. It's a death of another. It's a skill. He doesn't understand. Understanding. Benefit number three for the sake of time. Second Timothy. This one is a little long. Allow me to read it, but think. Think. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 17, but I'm not going to use all of them. The Bible, the Bible says, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. Pause. Anybody marrying in the last days, what is the Bible's assumption? First warning, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come what? Times of difficulty. Now it goes on. For people will be lovers of self. So what is going to produce the difficulty, including the economic difficulty in Kenya, in Ghana, in Africa? No, it's not just by accident. It's not because we are black people. Ladies and gentlemen, for people will be lovers of self, greed, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parent, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, churchgoers, but denying its power thereof. Avoid such people. Pause. It starts with war. But understand this. What's the benefit of understanding? Based on this text. I don't have time. Understanding guards you. Shock. It's your shock absorber. I said the reason why there is confusion in the homes on Sabbath is because of what? It's a what problem? It's a sin problem. I can't have that attack that my wife has cheated on me. I have prepared. The Bible says, but if I catch that man, <laughs> if me, I catch that man. But understand this. The reason why you are going to be shocked is, you do, I don't understand why he's behaving like this. I don't understand what's wrong with this woman. What kind of woman is he? What kind of man are you? You are so wicked. You are so brutal. I was on the phone today, five hours, and I was listening. But I'm so wicked. I hate him. I say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm listening. The problem. Understand. She was shocked when she saw the husband's paycheck. He has deceived her for 18 years. And she found out this week, past weekend, she can't take it. But she has forgotten. Second Timothy 3 says, if you are marrying during this phase of earth history, please be prepared. There will be shocks. Why? The human beings during this time cannot be trusted. You are marrying at your own peril. So budget that I will be, I can be disappointed. Hope for the best, but budget also for her, the worst. So what does understanding do? Understanding guards you from shock. People have died from shock. The problem why there's frustration is lack of hope. Understand. Benefit number four. Psalm 119 verse 34, for the sake of time, it says, give up, give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Mm. Why do people not keep or observe God's law? The psalmist says, look, let's have a deal. Just aid me. Let me have the in-between fill-ins. Let me know the depth of what you are requiring. 
Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it. Sometimes parents are demanding something from their children and the children cannot obey. The issue is they don't understand. In other words, understanding and powers towards willing obedience. Putting it differently, understanding empowers us to do right because it is right. Why is God saying, don't have sex before marriage? Don't just tell the young people, thou shalt not fornicate. They know. Break it down. Why? The church is not able to teach the why. He said, God says it. You must do it. They don't understand. One young lady come and say, Pastor, how can I be feeling horny from 13 years till 33? And the Bible says, don't sex. God should take this horniness out. I say, mm -hmm. I pretended I was not shocked. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared for that question. Can I talk to you urgently? It's, it's important, yes? And this was, boom, I nearly collapsed. I said, okay, okay. The Bible is saying, when people don't understand, they can't keep, they can't observe. Is there any agreement between you and your boyfriend, you and your spouse, you and your children? And it appears you are the only one running around it. Take time, explain it, explain it, explain it. Demonstrate it, demonstrate it, demonstrate it because understanding empowers us to do right because it is right. My daughter, when she was born, she's called Susan. She has never eaten fish or meat or beef. No, Susan. Before she was born, I sat the mother down and we agreed. The child will not eat fish and meat, at least until she decides when she's old, she wants to do that. So when Susan was born, based on the level she is at every phase in time, I tried to explain. Somebody gave my daughter food and she asked, is there meat? The person said, no. And she started eating and discovered it. Nobody can console her. She cried to death. Do you know the reason why? She understood I was not there. The mother was not there. They need to call that we should apologize to her on their behalf. When people understand, they are, there is a higher propensity for them to keep. In other words, understanding empowers families to obey God. So the question is, which aspect of God's law, God's will, is your family not able to keep the question is boiling down to understanding. Let me say it differently. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, it says, As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. So now you tell me now, by this time I've done enough, what is the benefit of understanding? As for what was sown on good soil, it is the one who hears the word and also what? Understand. In other words, there are people who hear the word, but they do not what? Understand. This is the reason why there should be more teaching in the church than preaching. People must understand. When they understand, so they will hear. Hearing is not enough. Verbalizing it is not enough. They need to understand. When they understand, they will observe. When they observe, they will bear fruits. In other words, understanding and powers towards godly 
fruit bearing. Put it differently. Families live righteously when they understand. So the reason why there is confusion over a subject, ladies and gentlemen, there is no understanding. I don't want to deliver the point. Proverbs 3 verse 13, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains war. Understanding. Pause. Why is there misery in the marriage? Why is there tear? Why are the children unhappy? Why is she dating this young man and she knows no peace? He knows no peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the crisis is not just, no, it's not his temperament. You don't understand the temperament. You saw him, you love his body shape, you love her. No, you do not understand. Happy is the man. Who finds wisdom? Anybody who gains understanding, what is the result? Happiness. Understanding gives you happiness. What do I mean by happiness? Pleasure. It gives you joy. It gives you a sense of emotional condition, a wholeness, wellness, understanding. Whenever you see people are married and they are not happy, there is a lack of all understanding. Anybody worshiping the Lord and is not happy doesn't understand the Lord. Why so much suffering? We don't understand God. Why failure? We don't understand God. Why delays? We don't understand God. Why do people walk away from the Lord? They don't understand God. Ladies and gentlemen, relationship without a mutual understanding will bring about pain no happiness stop consulting malams stop going for too many prayer meetings invest in understanding ah. i cook he doesn't eat so you are telling jesus change his heart no find out why he's not eating the food what kind of lazy christians are this she says i will not give you sex i'm the husband why 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 won't you give me sex why am the husband? Foolish man. Foolish man. You lack understanding. Why is he not giving you sex? The, the solution is not a side chick. That's a lazy approach. The solution is, why will a woman agree to be my wife and not give me sex? Could it be I am underperforming? Could it be she's emotionally detached? Could it be I'm hurting her whilst we are being intimate? Could it be my reaction towards her? There should be a reason. Why will a full grown man that is not impotent refusing to sleep with a wife? Do you have mouth order? Do you have body order? Are you putting him off? Are you unclean? There are varieties of issues. The problem is lack of understanding. Lastly, understanding is a wellspring of life. To him who has it, but the correction of fool is fully. Anybody who has understanding, what do they have? Abundant life, not just eternal life. In this life also, if you have understanding, you have abundant life. You may not have all the things you need, but you'll be happy. The Bible says, understanding is a wellspring of life. So which phase am I in now? I'm in my sunny state. I am in my morning state. I am not late yet. I'll keep pushing. I'll keep hustling. I'll keep working. Ladies and gentlemen, understanding gives Abundant life. A scripture text. Through wisdom, the house is built. But after you build a house, for the house to be established, many businesses were set up in Kenya. After two, three years, they collapse. Building is easy. But having an established business, functional, you need 
understanding. In the next five minutes, just pardon me. How do I get understanding? Three texts. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. If you indeed want an understanding, rule number one, distrust yourself. Distrust yourself. Any philosophical underpinning, any methodological framework you are deploying to get a depth of what the problem is, if it is contrary to God's will, you will not find what you are looking for. Hollywood cannot make you happy. No Hollywood. No. Listen, the entertainment industry, don't, they, they are not the originators of love relationship. They can't make you happy. Do not trust in your own understanding. This is the way I want to rule my home. No. The Bible says, be guided by this. It's a sign of humility. If you don't understand that a car you are driving, when it has a problem, the originator, the manufacturer must be contacted. You can go ahead and marry and deal with your marriage the way you feel. Because you are coming from a Kisi land. Do it like the way the Kisi men do it. We'll see if you'll be happy. You will never be happy till you die. You can marry one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, people have been polygamous. They said, foolishness is foolishness. All is foolishness. Don't trust yourself. Second Timothy 2 verse 7. Think over what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding. Where can you get understanding? Including what we are studying today. Who will give you the understanding to the subject matter today? Is the Lord. Where will he speak first from his word? Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful. It's a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. God is able to know, assess where you are, and can bring you understanding. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. For the Lord give wisdom from his mouth. Come knowledge and what? Understanding. The word of God gives understanding. I love the Bible. Today, people have PhD. They run this book down. It's a simple book. It will guide you. Listen, when I dated my wife, we never had sex till we married. Two years. She came to Ghana. She stayed for two months. She went back to the mother, clean, virgin. When I'm going to visit her, because I am not God, I am a man of God. A man before God. So I'll go with my friends. Mm. I won't stay in the room with her alone. Proverbs chapter 7. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. When I see someone laugh, mm. even if you put the Greek Bible, it will not stand. So I refuse to meet her alone. How do I know? The Bible has cautioned Proverbs 7. If you put a Greek Bible, it will fall down. So I go with my friends. And go and visit her. Psalm 119, verse 130. The unfolding of your words, the opening of your word, the revelation of your word gives light. It gives understanding to quit people. Simple. Anytime you read the Bible, they say simple, it means they're stupid. So are you stupid? Yes. Where can you get understanding through the unfolding of God's word? My prayer today, and I give them a song, they are going to play it for me. Lord, give me grace to make pursuing understanding a topmost priority. All I need, I want to pursue understanding. They are going to play for us a song I give them. Have thy own way, Lord. I want you to spend the next three minutes and tell the Lord, I need understanding.
You can't fix your marriage. You need God. You can't fix your relationship alone. You need direction from God. In the next three minutes, speak to God. Where you are lacking in your relationship or in your marriage, have thy own way, Lord. Those joining online, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Search me. Try me, dear Lord. Wash me just now. As in thy presence. Humbly I bow. Your wife is hurting because she doesn't understand you. Your husband is in pain. I'm wounded, Lord. I am tired. I've tried many times. I've failed. Today I confess I need help. thy own way Lord have thy own way I want God to hold me see the way your children are so angry some of you your children would not have anything to do with you they don't understand some of you you are angry with your husband it's because you do not understand why he did what he did some of you your boyfriends your girlfriend you are roaming you are searching for answers Today, God says, frustrations in relationship is caused by lack of understanding. Ask God for this grace. When the song ends, they play it again. And I'll pray. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold all my being. Sway me, Lord, absolutely. Absolute Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Till everybody who knew me to be a womanizer, a cantangorous woman, and this united family, they should see that there is a change in our family. We want to pray. They will give us that song again. If you are here this evening, you need understanding. I just want you to stand on your feet as we pray together. And those of you joining online, all heads bow, all eyes closed. Have thy own way, Lord. As they play that song very quietly, we want to pray. I feel I descend. Somebody is here today. You are tired with the way you yourself you are behaving. Either in the marriage, in a relationship. You want to say, dear Lord, help me. As I pray, just be telling the Lord, change me, tool me, equip me to be a better person. Father in heaven, for far too long, 
this unfamiliar variable misunderstanding is what is killing the families the anger the greed the washing our dirty linen in public husband and wife they just do not understand themselves children do not understand their parents siblings misunderstanding people are preparing to be married and there is just confusion everywhere we have cast the devil many times but still our relationships are not changing we need a tool of understanding some of us we are lazy Lord when issues happen we don't dig deep our wives are in their 50s yet we don't want to investigate what women go through when they are 50 we lack understanding our children are in their teenage years parents lack understanding how they can raise them up and they have gone into the far country there is pandemonium in the house of God Africa is in crisis Kenya is in crisis Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Lord name it, Europe, the whole world. Relationships are in agitation. Lord, what we lack is we lack understanding. Today, let there be light. Let there be light. There is too much shallowness. May we dig deep. Husbands are cheating. What may be the reason they may be unconverted? People have issues when they were growing up, they have not reconciled. Broken men are becoming husbands and fathers. Lack of mentorship. Unconverted men and women, Lord, the house of God. Ten people get married, five they divorce. Today, thank you for the revelation. We lack understanding. We wonder why we can't communicate as couples. Someone is saying something. The other party is not getting it. Lack of understanding. Let there be silence in the homes. Lord, the distractions are too much. We are distracted by social media. Distracted by workspace. Distracted by ambitions. We can't listen to each other and one another. Today, in this place, in this place, we pray for every family. We pray for every relationship. We pray for every individual. In the name of Jesus, may we embrace understanding. May we embrace understanding. Let there be investment to understand. May we invest to understand. May we invest time. May we invest resources. May we dig deep through your word. May we buy material. May we go to seminars. May we crave for understanding. The days of ignorance must be over. Lord, let there be light here at Nairobi Central. We pray for every marriage. We pray for every single person. We pray for every relationship. The days of blindfolded relationship, they will be over. We will throw light into the relationship. We want to see the darkness no more eating in the dark we want to see what we are eating may we understand why our children are the way they are why our spouses are the way they are why our friends are the way they are why our loved ones are the way they are today mighty god anybody in search of understanding when they lift their voices when they search through study may you make it possible let there be enlightenment let there be illumination and may the frustrations and the tears of our wives, our sisters, our mothers, our husbands and fathers and brothers and spouses and our children, may it end. Let a new culture emerge in this church. When we do not get it, we ask, we don't understand. Take away the pride. 
If there is somebody right now watching online, her relationship is crumbling down at the point of divorce. May you help and hold somebody and bring forth lights and save a marriage. Save a friendship. Save a relationship. Save a contract. Save a partnership. And may this understanding transcends the walls of the church until we meet again tomorrow at the same time. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the God of understanding bless you with this unalloyed, simple, yes, very difficult principle of life. And may our relationships get better. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. I want to say something before I go. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. in the morning, wherever you are listening to me, we'll be having a prayer session online. 8 a.m. It's 30 minutes. As many as can, we share the link. Those of you who are part, you can share the link with your friends. We'll post it on social media. I was the communication group. Anybody, we're going to have a prayer session 8 a.m. to 8.30 in the morning. I encourage all of you to join. See you. God bless you. Have a good night.